Hi, welcome to RG Lectures. In this video, we are going to study the concept of coordinate system. Okay, so there are there is a Cartesian coordinate system which we used to study, which we study till date, which is this x y z. There is a polar coordinate system which you might have studied in mathematics. Okay, in that polar coordinate system, we calculate the point, we measure the point by using two coordinates r and theta. In the same way, if we extend the polar coordinate system to higher physics, we get two more uh, two more coordinate system, which are cylindrical coordinate system and the spherical coordinate system. So this is going to be the content of the today's lecture. Okay, so this will be a lengthy lecture. Uh, pro a good amount of mathematics will be involved in this lecture. Okay, so just be conscious and you will understand everything. So let's start. Okay. My telegram group link is given in the description. So suppose I have been provided with a point. So I have been provided with this point. So how do I calculate the coordinates of this point in our Cartesian coordinate system? So we start from the origin. We move a x distance and that is what is called as the x coordinate. In the same way, to calculate the y coordinate system, what we do? We start with the origin, we move towards the y axis and we get the y coordinate. So in this way, we calculate the or we measure the coordinates in the rectangular system. Talking about the polar coordinate system, in polar coordinate system, first of all, we measure the distance from the origin to the point. That distance is called as r. Then we measure the angle. Then we measure the angle. Angle starts from the positive x-axis in anti-clockwise direction. Remember, what are the rules for considering the angle? First of all, it is in positive axis. Consider only positive axis. You cannot measure the angle from this axis. Okay. Second rule, angle subtended should be in the anti-clockwise sense. You cannot measure the angle in the clockwise sense. So these are the two rules. If you are okay with these rules, you can calculate the coordinate of any system by just measuring the r and theta. Now, first of all, let us uh, revise the basics. So is there any relationship between the Cartesian coordinate system and the polar coordinate system? So yes, there is a relation. So suppose this is my x and y. This is my x, this is my x, this is and my, this is my y. Let us draw the origin point on the origin to the point. So isn't it not my r? Like, right, r was also in this wave. It is what was from the origin to the point. So if this is my r, this is my x, this is my y. So let us apply cos theta, sin theta, tan theta. So I will get the correlations between the both. So steps are here. I know. I hope you know how to apply these. Sine of theta is equals to the opposite upon hypotenuse. Cos of theta is equals to the adjacent upon hypotenuse. Tan of theta is equals to the uh, adjacent. Mm, tan of. Am I doing something wrong? Tan of theta is equals to the adjacent upon opposite. O H A H O A. Oh, tan of theta is equals to the opposite upon adjacent. Okay, maths always confuses me. Okay, so in this way, we can derive the relation between all of three. And if I want to calculate the R, R is simply by applying Pythagoras theorem, I can write R is equal to the directly root of x square plus y square. So this is the value for the R. This is the value for the theta. So if you have been provided with x and y, so you can find R using this formula. And if you want to find theta, you can find theta using this formula. So these two are the relationships between the Cartesian and the polar coordinate system. So here it is a small example. Just calculate yourself. Okay, X and Y. Try to convert these things into the uh, polar coordinate system. You no, do not have to do anything. Just what is R? R is equal to the root of X square plus Y square. Okay, so 4, 4 is a 16 plus 3. Uh, plus 4 which will be 16 2 to the 4 plus 16 plus 4 it is root of 20 and what will be theta theta will be 10 inverse of y by x so what is y it is 4 it is 1 to 1 by 2 okay just calculate these values through calculator you will get the r coordinate as well as you will get the theta coordinate okay so whatever we studied till now was into two dimensions. R and theta, the polar coordinate system, uses just two dimension. 
But now let us extend the same polar coordinate system into three dimensional form. Okay, now let us study the 3D coordinate system. So in 3D coordinates, we consider two type of symmetry. One is the cylindrical coordinate system and other one is the spherical coordinate system. It is essential that we first study the cylindrical coordinate system. So let us make a 3D Cartesian system first. So this is my 3D Cartesian system. Consider a point in this coordinate system. Okay, in this coordinate system, sorry. Uh, so yes, of course, there will be three points X, Y, Z. There will be three coordinates at, as it is a 3D coordinate system. So it is hard. Okay, I cannot convert a 3D system into a cylindrical 3D system so much easily. So let us drop a perpendicular. Let us drop a perpendicular. Now someone can ask, sir, can you tell us why do we drop a perpendicular? See, if I drop a perpendicular on the XY plane, okay, then I will get my point into XY plane. Now XY plane is a two dimensional plane and I know how to work out on the things in the two dimensional plane. So that was the reason I have dropped the perpendicular in the two dimensional plane. So here I have a point which is XYZ. And here it is perpendicular so dropped on the xy plane. So the coordinates of this point is x and y. Okay. Now let us draw a line from the origin. Let us name this line as r. As per the polar coordinate system. Let us draw an angle in the anti-clockwise sense from x-axis. Let us name it as theta. So that is what I have done here. Okay, and what will be my Z? Z is always the height. So height will be this complete height Z. Okay, so basically in three dimensional polar coordinate system, I have three coordinates. R that was same as two dimensional structure. Theta that is again same as two dimensional structure and Z. Z is here the height. Okay, but this is the way of calculating the polar coordinate system. Okay, using polar coordinate system. But you will say, sir, you were telling you were we will teach a cylindrical coordinate system. Yes, last slide was about cylindrical coordinate system only. Yes, if I consider this as my radius, okay, if I consider this as my radius and I also consider a line from here to here, I consider this as my radius and I rotate it through the circle. I rotate in, in the three degrees, 360 degree sense. So what I will get? So in the below section, I will get something like this. In the above section, I will get something like this. Oh my God. What will be the height of this? Height is Z. So, oh my God. This is a proper cylinder, I can say. Of course, uh, here I have to draw the perfect diagram. I will get something like this. Okay. <laughs> here I have uh, done some error. Let us see. Uh, so, yeah, this is the proper diagram. Okay. We will get a cylinder like this. Okay, so this is what is all about the cylindrical coordinate system. So this is the, these are the basics. These are just the basics of the cylindrical coordinate system. If I want to calculate a point in the cylindrical coordinate system, I will require three coordinates, R, theta and Z. Okay, so basically we studied these in the Cartesian form using X, Y, Z and X, Y. And finally, we derived something like R, theta, Z using uh, these things. So definitely as we have find the relationships earlier in the two dimensional structure, do you remember we have find the relationships between the both in the same way in cylindrical coordinate system also we will find the relationship between both. So let us consider the similar similar and the same diagram. So if I consider this triangle, okay, I have drawn y axis here, okay, a vector parallel to y axis is also y axis. A vector parallel to x axis is also x axis. Okay, if I construct these things, I can see there is a triangle. Okay, in this triangle, this is my x axis, this is my y axis, this is my r point, and this is the angle theta here. Okay, this is the angle theta. So just apply the same things, we will get the same answer. Just apply the Pythagoras theorem. This is this angle is 90 degree because this is the parallel to y. So angle between x and y axis is always 90 degree. So apply similar things. For example, if I apply tan of theta, what is tan of theta? Tan of theta is opposite. Opposite to theta is y. What is adjacent? Adjacent is that side which has two angles. So here it is theta, here it is 90 degree. So this is my relationship. 
and height is same in both the coordinates. You'll see clearly the z coordinate is same, which we have made no th no changes to the z coordinate because z coordinate is the height. So no matter it is Cartesian coordinate system or it is a polar coordinate system, the height always remains same. Okay, so z is equals to the z. R is equals to the, in the same way Pythagoras theorem root of x square plus y square and theta tan of theta is equals to this thing. So in examination they can ask you to find the relationship between the r, theta, z and find the relation between x, y, z. Find the relationship between these, these two. Okay. So this is the conclusion of the lecture till now. This is the conclusion of the lecture till now. Now, now starts the main physics, the real physics where we have to uh, do something, we have to some do some work. So let's start. Now, in physics, we have a quantities which we call as vectors, right? So of course, every vector has a magnitude as well as direction, right? So in Cartesian coordinate system, how we used to denote the direction? We used to denote the directions by using I cap, by using J cap, by using K cap. Okay. In this, in this way, we used to denote the directions. We had I cap, we had J cap, we had K cap. But in cylindrical coordinate system, if you see clearly, we have no such thing as I, J, K. We have R cap. We have theta cap, we have z cap. So now we have to find the relationship between the i, j, k cap and r, theta and z cap. Okay. So basically, uh, if this is my vector in i, i j, k cap, uh, del operator is also written in i, j, k cap. So now we have to derive del operator also in terms of r, theta, z. We have to derive Laplacian also in terms of r, theta, z. Everything we have to now derive in terms of R, theta and Z. So let us start with the procedure. So first thing, had we made any changes in the height of the vectors? No, height of the vector or height of our point was same. Whether it is a Cartesian coordinate system or it is a polar coordinate system. So Z is equals to the Z. So K cap will be equal to the K cap. Okay, that means this thing height is always equal to the height. Z is equals to the Z cap. Okay, I can write Z cap is equals to the Z cap. Whether it is the Cartesian coordinate system or it is a polar coordinate system or it is a 3D cylindrical system. Any system height is always same. So Z cap is equals to the Z cap. So congratulations, one conversion is over. Okay, now in the second and third conversion, uh, definitely a some, uh, some amount of maths will be required. Now, can you tell me what is the direction of a radius vector? The R vector which we are drawing. Can you tell me what is the direction of it? Suppose this is my point. So, where will my radius vector tend to? Where will my radius vector tend to? The radius vector always tends towards the point. That means this direction is away from the point. If here is my point and I draw a coordinate, a line from the origin, where will be the direction of radius vector? It will be in this direction. If here is my point, where will be the direction of my radius vector? It will be this one. So direction of the radius vector is always towards the point, means in the direction of the point. Okay, it is going away from the point, basically, I can say. Okay, so if this is the point which we are dealing with so long, so this is the direction of the unit vector. Okay. If we draw x-axis, so how do we draw? This is my x-axis, so we draw this is my i cap. If this is my y-axis, so we draw this is my j cap. If this is my z-axis, we draw this is my k cap. Okay, this is my k cap. Okay. So in this way, we have direction of r cap. Can anyone tell me what is the direction of theta here? Can anyone tell me what is the direction of theta? See, what is theta? In the starting of the lecture, we just saw that theta is anything angle subtended in anti-clockwise sense. Okay, we are subtending an angle in anti-clockwise sense. So suppose this is my R. Okay, this is my R. This is the direction of the R cap. What will be the direction of theta? See, theta is coming in this way. Okay, if this is my R, this line is my R, theta is coming this way, this way, it is coming in anti-clockwise sense. If this hand is coming in the anti-clockwise sense, what is the direction? It is 90 degree to this. If suppose I have a vector, okay, I have a vector which is in this direction, theta is going this way, okay, so this angle is 90 degree to this. I hope you are getting the point. 
where is theta coming theta is coming in anti clockwise sense in the 90 degree so basically theta vector will be in this way okay it is approaching in this direction okay so it will be 90 degree just try to imagine these things it will be easy for you okay so theta is 90 degree to the this it is similar to circular motion in circular motion we have two types of thing one is velocity one is acceleration velocity and acceleration are both per, per, both perpendicular to each other so same logic okay so that's it this is my y axis this is this line is my x axis this is my theta uh, theta vector or phi vector any constant you can consider and r is my radius vector okay so let us now first of all resolve the components of x and y now deep mathematics is there till the end of the lecture okay deep mathematics is there let us resolve the component r into two components so if this is my r vector i can resolve it into two components one, one component will be along y axis. This is my y axis. So this is my r cap y. One component is always along the x axis. So this is my x cap. Okay. This is my x cap. Okay. If this is angle phi, now instead of theta, I am dealing with phi. Okay. I am naming it as phi. So this is also phi. Why? Because these are corresponding angles. See, this line is same. This line is same. Okay. This line is same. This is the extension of this line okay this line is also same if this is x axis then this is also along the x axis so both the lines are same so if this is theta or this is phi so this also has to be phi because both the lines are the extensions of the same line only okay or parallel to same line only okay if this is phi you know then this component would be cos phi this component would be sine of phi okay so that is the thing which we are going to do now let us try to find the cos of phi in this triangle Okay, let us try the cos of phi, find cos of phi in this triangle. It is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So what is the adjacent? This is the adjacent. What is adjacent? This. This is what? This is our x-axis. Right? This is our x-axis. You can clearly see it is parallel to x-axis. So I can name it as x-axis. Okay. What is hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is this thing. Okay. Since I am considering unit vector. So what is the magnitude of unit vector? Magnitude of unit vector is always equal to 1. Do you remember this you used to do in the basics of class 11 so hypotenuse is equals to the one so basically what i get is x dash is equals to the cos of y in the same way what is sine theta it is opposite what is opposite to theta opposite is y axis because it is parallel to y axis and what is the hypotenuse it is one so y dash is equals to the sine of y okay so what i will get is r vector is equals to the vector x cap vector y cap x cap vector has some magnitude which is cos phi what is the direction direction is along x axis y vector has some magnitude which is sin phi what is the direction of the y vector which is j y vector which is j cap so this is the uh, this is the relation between the r cap in terms of i and j vector so this is the second unit vector and for third unit vector we have to do lots and lots of mathematics so if you have guts if you have patience if you have dedication so let's start now forget about the r okay forget about the r we just know that our five vector is 90 degree to r vector so let us now resolve the phi vector into its x and y component so if this is my phi vector in this direction so where will be the x component x component will be in this direction Barabar. so this is my phi x component okay where will be my phi y component phi y component will be along this direction right phi y component will be along this direction so this is my phi y component Let us name this component of x as x double dash. Let us name this component of y as y double dash. Why? Because I do not want to confuse with my previous components which were x dash and y dash. Which were x dash and y dash. Okay. And this is my vector phi cap. Again, now I have to play in terms of triangle. Okay. Now I have to play in terms of triangle. Okay. Now focus. This is the main game. Nothing else is there. This is the main game. I hope you are understanding things first of all. Okay. So can you tell me what is this vector? What is this angle? So of course this angle is equals to the phi. In this way phi was defined that phi is the angle starting from the x-axis till the r vector. So this is phi. Okay. What is this line here? 
what is this blue line here this blue line is basically equals to the y axis what is this line here this line is equals to the x axis so what is the angle between x and y so total angle between x and y is 90 degree right and out of that 90 degree this angle is phi so what will be this this will be 90 minus phi suppose you consider this as phi so x plus phi is equals to the 90 so what will be x x will be equal to the 90 minus phi okay so this is 90 minus phi okay so i hope you understood the angle number one you understood the angle number two if these two things are clear let us proceed ahead okay, hmm. okay. so do you know this angle is 90 degree this is r vector and this is phi vector it is defined in such a way that it is 90 degree okay so this total angle is again 90 degree out of which one component is 90 minus phi so now suppose this angle is y so y plus 90 minus phi is equals to the 90 so what i will get i will get 90 90 cancel y is equals to the phi so this angle number 3 is equals to the phi okay so if this angle is phi so what will be this angle this angle will be in cos of phi and this angle will be in terms of sine of phi okay so that is what i have done in the in the next slide x axis is in terms of sine of phi but uh, x axis is in this direction but my component is in this direction so it will be minus sine of phi i cap that is minus i cap into sine of phi magnitude and cos phi into j cap okay in the same way you can find the magnitude so this is the third relation between the two so finally let us conclude this is the relationship which I was searching for, which I was aiming to find. Okay. So if you didn't understand anything, just watch this video twice. It's not your fault that you didn't understand. Neither it's my fault because it is mathematics. Sometimes you need to watch the videos two times or three times, then you can understand. Now the next thing which I am teaching is completely extra. That is not needed. Okay. If you want to find i cap, j cap, k cap in terms of r and phi, so what you need to do, you need to perform mathematics. So you have got these three equations. Okay. So multiply your equation number second by cos of phi. Okay. If I multiply this equation by cos of phi, what I will get? I will get r cos phi, cos square phi i cap and sin phi cos phi. Multiply equation three by minus sin phi cap. Okay. So what I will get minus sine phi times of r cap. Of course, here it will be phi cap. Okay. And here it will be minus sine square i cap minus plus cos phi and minus sine phi multiplied by this. So this will become cancelled as terms are same. Sine square phi plus cos square phi it is 1. So I can take out that as common. Okay. I can take out that as common. And preferably this will be the answer. Okay. So in this way you can find out anything. What is the trick? Suppose you want to find out the j captor, j vector. So what you will do? You will multiply sine phi by such a thing that sine square phi plus cos square phi becomes 1. Example, uh, you can multiply this by sine of phi and this by cos of phi. So what will become? These both things will become 1 and you can find the j cap also. And other things will become cancel automatically. And this is the proof which is written, but it is not that much important. So this is the i cap, j cap, k cap in terms of r and phi vector. Okay. And this was our r, phi and k cap in terms of i cap, j cap, k cap. So this was all about the cylindrical coordinate system. In the next video, I will be starting with the spherical coordinate system. Uh, spherical coordinate system is good <laughs> is good so see you in the next video have a nice day ahead uh, do share these videos in your class groups as well thank you so much